Well, I f***ed it up again. Nailed it. Hey YouTubers, Ziski Films here. Today I'm doing another video on how to change the coolant in your BMW R1200 GS or GS Adventure. Now this is a video that was requested by one of the viewers and surprisingly enough it was not on my list of videos to do. One of the reasons for that is that there's no mention of this in the maintenance section of the user's manual. Huh? Now checking online, apparently some users have reported that BMW says that the coolant is good for the lifetime of the bike. I'm not sure I believe that because I don't think anything lasts forever. Now some others have reported that they've talked to their BMW dealers and they've recommended that they change the coolant every three to four years, which sounds a little bit more reasonable. Now there's two different ways you can check the coolant. One is using a hydrometer to check the specific gravity and the second method is using a pH test strip depending on the type of coolant your bike uses will determine which method you should use to check it. If your bike uses ethylene glycol, then you should use a hydrometer. And if your bike uses propylene glycol, then you would use a pH test strip. Now BMW uses ethylene glycol, so we would use a hydrometer to check it. But in my case, my bike is just short of five years old and I've never changed a coolant before. So I'm just going to assume nothing lasts forever and go ahead and replace it. Now I'm gonna be using the Haynes manual. There's a procedure in here on how to drain the coolant and then manually fill and burp the system to get all the air out. I'm also gonna show you another way to refill the coolant using a vacuum method. And here I have two different brand kits that I'm gonna be testing out. Also check out my other how-to videos. I have a playlist set up just for the R1200 GS on my channel. I'll put a link in the description below. Speaking of the description below, there'll be lots of other resource information in that section, including the list of tools needed, part numbers of any parts or special tools used in this video, torque values, and chapter markings in case you wanna to jump to a specific section of this video. Also, if anything is unclear or if I'm speaking too fast, click on that CC subtitle icon to view the transcript in English or in your own language. Oh, and one last thing, a special thanks to Gates Robert Clark and Timothy Hall for donating to this channel. All donations will go back into the channel and for producing more videos unless you specify otherwise, in which case I'm only more than happy to oblige. Anyway, thanks again to Gates and Timothy. We ready? We ready? Roll intro. First, we're going to get a baseline on how the cooling system works before we change the coolant so we can make sure that it works the same way after we change the coolant. So we'll start the bike and bring it up to temperature. Here we can see at 199 degrees Fahrenheit the thermostat opens and then allows cooling to pass through both radiators. When the engine temperature reaches 212 degrees Fahrenheit we can see the radiator fan churning on. We'll check it again after we change the coolant. So the three steps we'll cover today are draining the system, running a flush cycle, and then refilling with fresh coolant, and we'll try two different methods. Here are the tools you'll need today. The vacuum refill method requires an air compressor. You'll also need fresh coolant. The one I have here requires mixing with distilled water. Blue Loctite for one of the bolts. There's a cooling system access panel here on the right hand side of the bike where you can access the radiator and cooling system overfill reservoir. The only way to empty out the overfill reservoir is by removing the body panels. So first we'll have to remove the seat. You need a Torx T25 bit to remove these two screws at the bottom of the tank cover. And the same bit for these two screws in the storage box. There are three more screws at the front of the tank cover. and then carefully remove the tank cover. There's some clips in the panel that hold it in place around the gas inlet. Next we'll want to remove the black fairing on the right hand side. There are five screws holding it in place and you'll need a Torx T25 bit to remove them. 
two of the screws are on the inside of the panel near the radiator. These two screws are slightly shorter than the other three. Next we'll have to remove the upper crash bar. You'll need a Torx T40 bit to remove the two bolts. The lower bolt will need some Loctite 243. You'll probably want to disconnect this fog light first. This next panel has three screws holding it in place. And again, you'll need a Torx T25 bit to remove these screws. and then one body panel clip near the radiator. The left side of this panel needs to slide out. Now we can drain the cooling system. We'll need to loosen up the radiator cap, but only do this when the engine has cooled down because the system is pressurized when hot. With the bike still on the center stand, remove the right cylinder drain bolt using a 15 millimeter socket. Place a container underneath the cylinder to capture all of the old coolant. Inspect and replace the crush washer if needed. Next place the bike on its side stand. We're doing this to force all of the remaining coolant to the left side. Now remove the drain bolt on the left cylinder using an H5 Allen bit. Inspect and replace the crush washer if needed. Next we're going to remove the left radiator hose and this wrench is made just for sliding up hose clamps. The hose might need to be loosened up first and the pick is a good tool for this. Be sure to capture all of the coolant with a container. Now let's measure out how much coolant came out of the bike. So when we manually refill the system with new coolant, we want to ensure that we put back in at least the same amount of coolant we took out. I also removed the right radiator hose to see if there was any coolant left in the system. But there was not, so there's no need to remove the hose from the right radiator. Finally, I wanted to drain out the coolant from their overflow reservoir. I first tried siphoning out the old coolant, but there's a baffle inside the reservoir that prevents you from getting to the coolant. So we're going to have to remove the reservoir and there's one screw holding it in place. And you'll need a Torx T30 angled wrench to get that screw out.
So we took out about 1.5 liters of coolant, which includes about 100 milliliters of spillage. Now we'll put the hoses back on and reinstall the drain plugs. The torque value for the left cylinder drain plug is 10 newton meters. The torque value for the right cylinder drain plug is 5 newton meters. Now it's time to run a flush cycle. We want to keep the bike on the left side stand, and we're going to add about 1.5 liters of distilled water. You could probably use tap water for the flush cycle, but it'll leave behind minerals. Bottle the bike to burp out any air. You can also add distilled water to the overfill reservoir to flush out any old coolant. Put the radiator cap back on because we're going to now start the bike and bring it up to temperature. Also put the bike back on its center stand. We want to make sure the engine coolant temperature doesn't go past what we saw before, which was 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Looks like we're in good shape. After the engine temperature is cooled down, go ahead and remove the radiator cap. Now we'll go ahead and drain out the system again. Now we're going to refill with fresh coolant using a manual refill and burp method. Now we'll have to mix up a batch of fresh coolant. The one I have here is a concentrate so we'll have to mix it with distilled water. BMW recommends a 50-50 mix unless you're in a colder environment, in which case you would use 60% antifreeze and 40% distilled water. I'm doing a 50-50 mix, so I'll add 1 liter of antifreeze concentrate and 1 liter of distilled water. So if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button. And if you want to be notified every time I come out with a new video, click the subscribe button and then the bell icon next to it. Now I'll measure out the same amount of coolant that was drained out. When refilling with this method, pour the coolant in as slowly as possible to prevent any air from getting trapped in the system. After the coolants reach the top of the filler net, go ahead and waddle the bike to burp out any air. Watch this fill neck for any air being burped out. As the air comes out, the coolant level will drop. Go ahead and fill up as needed. Continue repeating this process until you don't see any air being burped out, 
and the coolant level doesn't drop. Once you're done here, don't forget to fill up the overfill reservoir. Go ahead and put the radiator cap back on. We're going to start the engine and bring it up to temperature. We still have some coolant left that we'll add later. A good sign, the cooling system is behaving exactly as before. Let the engine cool down and we want to check to see what the coolant level looks like. The coolant level has dropped so we'll have to add more. Waddle the bike again, make sure you burp out any air. Okay, that should do it, we're all set. Be sure to check the coolant level periodically. Now we're going to refill the coolant using a vacuum method with the Cosway brand kit. Don't forget we have to drain and flush the system first. This kit appears to be a copy of the Astro brand but at about half the cost. I had to change the air inlet connector to match my compressor and found the plastic threads were stripped. I went ahead and epoxied the air connector back in. This kit uses compressed air to create a Venturi effect to draw a vacuum. It includes a variety of radiator caps to fit most vehicles. This is the one for the R1200. There's one hose that connects to the cap and is used both for drawing a vacuum and refilling the coolant. There's another hose that connects to a second valve, which is immersed in the new coolant. The process is simple. Connect a compressed air line, draw a vacuum and close the valve, then open up the valve and let the vacuum suck in the new coolant. I want to prime the hose that's supplying new coolant, so I'm going to place the coolant above the fill point. Connect the coolant supply hose. Fill with the coolant mix. Here you can see I have an airlock in the hose. So I'm going to open up the valve to bleed out the air. I'm going to go ahead and top off the coolant and then connect to the radiator cap. Now connect the compressed air. You'll need an air compressor that can supply at least 90 psi. Now open the first valve to let air through. Open up the second valve to start drawing a vacuum. Pay attention to the vacuum gauge. We need to reach 0.8 bar, but this kit maxes out at 0.75 bar. That's the best we can do, but we'll go ahead and continue. We want to hold the vacuum for 10 to 15 minutes to make sure there are no leaks. It's normal for the hoses to contract when under a vacuum. If there are no leaks, go ahead and disconnect the compressed air. Now open up the valve supplying the new coolant. Watch the vacuum gauge. There's a sudden drop in vacuum. I expected the drop to be more gradual. Here you can see the remaining vacuum suck into coolant. Once the vacuum reaches zero, go ahead and disconnect the cooling hose and drain off any remaining coolant. Then disconnect the remaining hose and radiator cap. Unfortunately, there was not enough vacuum to fill up the entire cooling system. I have to top off with more coolant.
We'll put the cap back on, start the engine, and bring it back up to temperature again. And the cooling system is behaving the same way. Let the engine cool down and we'll check the coolant level again. The level dropped, so we'll have to top off with some more coolant. Be sure to check the coolant level periodically. Now we'll have a look at the airlift vacuum refill kit. Again, don't forget to drain and flush the system first. The airlift kit is similar to the Cosway kit in that it uses the Venturi effect to draw a vacuum. One key difference is that it connects directly to the fill neck. There's a rubber stem that expands as you tighten down to form a seal. The kit comes with a few rubber adapters to accommodate different fill neck sizes. This kit works essentially the same as the Costway kit. Connect the Venturi valve to the main body, then connect compressed air to the Venturi valve, open the valve to draw a vacuum, then close the valve, connect the coolant hose, and finally open up the valve and let the vacuum suck into coolant. You also need a compressed air line with at least 90 psi. Here we're looking for a vacuum of about 25 inches of mercury. I couldn't hold the vacuum in my first attempt. I disconnected everything and tightened down on the rubber stem. I'm going to disconnect the Venturi valve. This time the vacuum held. Now connect the hose for the coolant supply. I had an idea to fill up the hose with coolant, but in the end I was not able to get rid of an airlock, so I abandoned this idea. Plus, the instructions with the kit didn't mention this needed to be done. Here you can see the airlock in the hose. So I drained the coolant from the hose and just followed the instructions with the kit. Now we'll open up the valve and let the vacuum suck into coolant. Oh, that ain't good. I didn't watch the hose and the coolant and the level got too low and let air in. Well, I f***ed it up again. This time I filled up the container with enough coolant. I would show the video from my phone, but I didn't hit the record button. You can see that the gauge has a nice gradual drop in vacuum.
Once the vacuum gauge reaches zero, the process is complete. Go ahead and remove the kit so we can check the level. The coolant level is much higher with the airlift kit. Put the cap back on, we'll start the engine and check the temperature again. And again, the cooling system is working as it should. Let the engine cool down and top off with coolant if needed. Check the coolant level periodically. Now we can put everything back together. All right, so in the end, the vacuum method with the airlift uh, kit was the fastest way to refill with new coolant. You don't need to burp the bike, but you do need to top it off after you let it come up to temperature and allow the thermostat to open up and circulate the coolant. The main issue with the Costway kit was that it was not able to draw the level of vacuum that was needed to suck in enough coolant. I'm also not sure how accurate this gauge is. That alongside with the issues on the air inlet connector make me think that you're better off purchasing the Astro kit if you're looking for that sort of kit where you have lots of different radiator or cap options for different vehicles. Aside from that, the cooling system performed exactly the same way after both methods. So if you choose method one, manually fill up and then burp the system, that method works just fine. All right, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click on the like button. And if you wanna be the first kid on your block to be notified when I come out with a new video, click on the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it. Also, if you have any additional insight on what we covered today, please go ahead and put those comments into the comment section below. Also, if you have an idea for a video, those comments are welcome as well. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Now it's time to oblige the sponsors.